Hey, it's Marcel Allen here, and we are about to dive into Remarkable Reels, and it's going to be a live, live recording today. Several people have signed up, so I'm really excited, and just stand by. Thank you. Um, okay, let's get started. So welcome, everybody, to Remarkable Reels. This is basically some of my best learnings from the last three months of doing Reels. I felt extremely sh uh, slow to the Reel game because I've been leading a meetup on developing Digital U for years. The pandemic kind of caught that off guard. But I always say, imagine if you could out-motivate, out-train, out-sell, and out-entertain based on your digital platform, how much more profitable and generous could you be? So Digital Marcel, you guys are here live today. The people watching the recording are watching Digital Marcel, right? There's Digital Matt, real life Matt, Digital Michael, real life Michael. And so we all have these uh, digital personas, essentially, that when we're leveraging technology properly, there is an ongoing perspective of like my voice is still going when I'm sleeping or when I'm in the restroom or when I'm stuck in traffic or whatever, like digital Marcel is still, still going at a level, just like digital Lynette or real life Lynette can be going as well. And so we're talking about digital you and how can making remarkable reels support those goals of, again, leveraging your time, be more profitable, more entertaining, uh, being a better educator. And what does that look like? Seven technical things to jumpstart real creation. So who here is making reels right now? Just raise your, your, your hand. Are you guys doing the storyboarding or just kind of talking head type of things? A little bit of both? I largely just do talking head. Okay. And, and this will be good for everybody because I think there are multiple ways to be creative and I'm going to start with technical and then go creative and then talk about some leadership things to consider. But really captions, pinning it, understanding the metrics, uh, leveraging templates, easy uploads, how to save things and how to leverage music saves. I'm going to go into each of those as well. So first of all, captions. So old school video marketing, I used to pay a dollar a minute to get captions created. I, you know, if I did a 60 minute video, it'd be $60. Now built into reels are captions. So if you can see here, I think you can see my little blue arrow over here. Um, when you're in that video, as you're uploading a video into the reel, which is, you know, like you have to go to Instagram, click create a reel. But as you upload a, v a reel, there's this little happy sticker guy. If you click that, it's going to then let you add a poll or a GIF or a quiz or a caption. So for all those talking head videos or short speeches or poems or even songs, whatever you're creating, you can add captions. And this is one of the, the best things um, from that button. And again, you guys will get this recording if you're here live. You'll be able to select your font type. So the bottom side, you're going to see a couple little ways to pick your font it takes about a minute, so wait patiently, right? It's not 20 minutes, but it takes about a minute or two, depending on how long your thing is. And then you have to choose to position the text, meaning do you want that text across your face? Do you want it in the bottom right corner? Do you want it in the left corner? You can change the color, that type of thing. And then once it's done capturing all of your captions, all the words that you've spoken, you can then edit it. So it gives you this little tap to edit a word. So I say Marcel or Dreamosity or Laugh Tech and the thing always butchers it, right? So usually branded names get really kind of slaughtered or difficult words that maybe you mumbled. And so you can literally go in and ever edit every single word if you want, or just the big ones, right? So that's kind of your creative option. But I like to, you know, if I'm working for a client or something, I want to make sure I'm representing them <laughs> without a misspelling <laughs> because people don't like it when you spell Alzheimer's if you're running stuff for an Alzheimer's brand, right? So there are things that you want to slow down. So that's, that's technical thing number one is captions. And if you've never done captions before, just rip off the bandaid. You don't have to publish it. You can just get in there, upload a video, and then try the captions to see how it works. I probably, my first 10 or 20 videos, I didn't even do captions. And so if you haven't done that yet, give it a whirl. Um, the second thing is pin it. So if you have a sales funnel, if you have something you're launching or a promotion, so your typical you know profile looks like this, and then these little dots up here, you can kind of navigate differently. But this is a grid right here. So this this one, this little four, it looks like a waffle, is the grid. That's going to take- yeah. I mean, is there a way to make your, make that bigger? Um, like and you your... don't need to see all these. I'm just going to show you where this is on that profile. This oh, is that okay. This is that little line right there. But when you pin it, these little white pins right here, 
They indicate that you have featured content, whether it's a book launch or the top of your sales funnel, or maybe a very popular reel that just had a million <laughs> TikTok views met. <laughs> like, you know, like you can pin some of your most popular content. I didn't know this for the first two or three months. To me, it's very, very important if you are focused on promotion or selling within your, you know, your Instagram account, it shows up at the top. So I might do silly kitty videos or, you know, pool videos or some fun random stuff. But when people first come to me, if I'm running an ad or if a stranger comes to my account, these pinned pieces of content are what they're going to be that first impression, right? Because my most recent one may have been something different, you know? So you get to choose. Um, and then this little guy up here just means if you've been tagged in something. So if Lynette and I do a collaboration and we're both, you know, we got our two headshots in there and we got some, some great creative going anytime you've been pinned in content. So when I go check someone out, I'm like, well, where, who, who's pinned them in stuff, right? What are their reels and what, what are they really promoting on their grids? So you can kind of do a quick, just overview to see this. Um, and yeah, and it's just a little pin, white pin that shows up that they've pinned something important. Um, and again, best practice, pin whatever you want to feature, whether it's a sales thing, a recent promotion, or just something you want to showcase, you can do up to three. You can pin up to three on your grid and you can pin up to three in your reels. So, and then you can change them, right? So every month you could change these if you, if you choose to. So just know that's a technical thing uh, that you can do. Um, understanding metrics, I won't go too deep into this today, but there are really great metrics within Instagram. And I know there's a lot of debate on, you know, vanity metrics or like what really pays the bills. And I am the author of a book called Financial Joy. So I am a super numbers nerd. I love data droppers. And I encourage people to find out what do you value? Because I value views. I know some video editors, they're like, video views don't matter. And I'm like, well, if I'm working with a client and I got them three views, they're going to be pissed. <laughs> you know, if I can get them a thousand views, I'm doing pretty good. Um, but that may not be important to you. Maybe you're measuring revenue or how many calls you get. Um, I'm learning the more I dive into reels that saves are a really big thing. So like in the last 90 days, I've had 40 people save various pieces of content. What this little save does is it tells Instagram, hey, her content's worthy of being saved. So in a sense, and I don't have proof of this, but Instagram's literally sending more content to people when other people have saved that content. Because it means it's not just lame, useless stuff. It's like, oh, that's going to be a reference for future. And I'll show you more about saves in a moment. But you get to decide within the metrics, there's there's probably 40 things you could measure as a brand on Instagram. You do not need to measure all of them, right? But pick three or four, you know, whatever's important to you, pay attention to those numbers. And then that may, may shift as you, as you grow and learn. Um, okay, leveraging templates. This was like a dream come true for me when I found this because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not that good at storyboarding and what am I going to do? And how do I, how do I make better content faster? And when you're scrolling in the reels area, so like this little white icon here, this means you're in the reels feed. So if you're just watching other people's reels, people you follow or people you don't, occasionally you'll stumble across a, and it's not 100% of the time, but occasionally you'll stumble across a reel where it says use template. Again, I ignored this for the first two months probably. So I'm like, hey, this is important now that I know what it does. But if you click that, it pops up a screen like this. So depending on the nature of this video, it's basically saying, here's the bones of that storyboard. So some videos are like, pow, 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 like, you know, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. This one's 10 seconds, one second, one second, one second, one mm -hmm. second, right? So these templates, if you watch a video and you're like, oh my gosh, that's gonna give me a stroke. It's way too fast. Don't use those templates. If you find some that you're like, that seems like a the great pace that I could use, you can borrow those templates. So be looking for this little template icon to pop up. Again, it's not there for all of them, but that is a technical thing that I wish somebody knew me on or told me about on day one because I just, I didn't know I should click there, right? But now you guys know to click on the little thing that says templates. Um, and then the easy upload. So once you click that, you can literally click add media. And so you can click from your camera roll, any photo or video clip that you have that will then literally pop in there like easy, fast storyboarding. So it's just, it's fantastic. So if you're thinking of doing like a collage or a montage, you could have, you know, five photos ready, you go and find a template, let them do the pacing or whatnot. 
and it just magically you've got this thing that looks really cool and that's how creators are making really fantastic content as they're literally leveraging the the structure of somebody else's you know storyboard bones if you will so lots of technical stuff um and then save it so we talked about saves briefly or pinnets they're different with the save. So if you're like, oh, that was a cool video, Marcel or Lynette, like, or whoever you're like, that was really cool. There's a little flag and I don't think I did the screenshot for it, but there's like a little flat. It, it looks like this actually right here on the bottom of that reel or that photo. You can click on somebody else's content and then save it to a board. Very similar to Pinterest and how Pinterest lets you save content to a board, but it's a private board, right? So no link backs necessarily like going to Pinterest. Like, so I have um, some yoga exercises I wanna try. I'm working on a book. So I've been like called Allocation Station. So I'm borrowing some other like train images and metaphors for that. So it's just fascinating. Um, noms, you know, food. I have this thing with circles. Anytime I see a beautiful circle, I'll save it to a board called circles. When I'm creating stuff in circles, I can go look in that little board. Um, but for you, determine what type of things do you want to save? Do you want testimonials from, you know, other brands? Do you want to take insurance advice from another creator? Do you want to take hairstyles and save them for, you know, when you've got your granddaughter over next? Like whatever you want to create or save, you can. And I do believe that Instagram is saying, hey, ding, 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 this, this real got to save. We have a winner here. So they're going to send those videos to more people. Again, that's not proof. That's just kind of my hunch. But be looking for, in every single reel you do, you can see if people save it. You can go back and see, hey, I got three saves or zero or whatever. So it's just a thing to be considering about. Um, and if you're trying to find out, well, where did my saved ones go? These three little circles up here are going to open this screen and it's going to show you where your saves are, right? So if you see that there, that's how you're going to get to it. And again, you guys will have these slides if it's too much. Um, and then music saves. Okay. So Instagram started and it was like 100% photos and beautiful aesthetically designed layouts. And now it is a musician's game. So if you are into music and love music, this is going to be fun for you because as a creator, I can be scrolling through Instagram. So on the left here, if I see this reel and I'm like, ooh, I like that song, I can click on the musician's name and then boom, these are all the other reels that have been used with that same soundtrack. So you can go in and see, one, how are other people creating with that snippet of sound? You can see this one's only 14 seconds long, but then here I can click use audio. Right. If I don't want to use it in that moment, because I'm not making a real in the moment, you can save it. Right. So say fast forward a couple of days, you've got some content you want to share about. You you're you're making your reel. This little button here, the little music icon at the top, that's where you go in to find your music. Now, if you haven't saved any musics, uh, music clips, you can go in here and just search you know, fun music, techno music, rock and roll, Alanis Morissette, whatever you want to search for, you can see if, you can see if it's there and then you can um, save it. So here you can see, I've got my saved music is on kind of the right side here with all these items. There's also audio, right? So I just did one with, um, who was it? The Mandalorian, that movie. <laughs> You know, I used a Mandalorian clip because I was doing this creative thing. And so I can borrow the, the words and the audio from another creator. And this is a very collaborative and maybe even risky for some people, but there is a difference between audio and music files. Just for now, know that they exist. Um, and eventually you're going to want to, like I did just tell a client, go find 10 songs and just save them. Like get yourself a set of saved music. So when you're ready to do reels, you'll have music to go to, because if it's not something you like, you know, it's just hard to know. So you can save these for future creation. Really, really cool. Again, not just about pictures anymore. Okay, real quick. So technology in review, you can do captions, you can pin it, You've learned a little bit about understanding metrics. You can leverage templates, which is like the storyboard bones, essentially. You can upload content quickly, right, from the templates. It's one of the best ways to go. You can save it for future reference, and then you can save music because you're going to want to be able to leverage the music. Now, that's the technical geek stuff. I want to dive into some creative decisions that all accounts will have to make 
almost on every reel and this can be conscious or unconscious but i want to give them to you so you are kind of prepared and not overwhelmed when you're like oh my gosh there's too many things to decide because it can be a little bit overwhelming um okay traditional music versus trendy music i'm calling this the sound spectrum on the far left, you can go into the classics, right? G genre specific, you can talk about decade specific, 70s, 80s, 90s. Trending music is on the other side. So I like to play in the middle. I've been experimenting with both because there's no right or wrong here. This is not better or best. These are just creative choices creators are going to be faced with. Now, if you hear people talking about trending music and, oh, there's this trending song, this little white arrow right here will appear on some of the songs that you are noticing. This is an indicator it's a trending song. I've heard things that, you know, if you can get a trending song that's got less than 2,000 reels made, you have a better chance of that reel going to, you know, 10,000 or 50,000 views. I've also seen real um, trendy songs where they've already got a million created, but it's such a cool song, it's still getting more people to go there. I don't understand the full logistics of it, but you get to decide, are you going to support the new musicians? Or even if you are a musician, do you want to get your audios up there so people can leverage your sound and literally create visuals to support, you know, you playing the guitar or you on the piano? And so just know, uh, and it's tricky because I, a lot of my clients are grandparents, right? They have, they have grandchildren. They're in their sixties or seventies. So what, what's my preference may not be their preference. And so sometimes I have to think about, am I trying to design for myself or am I designing for that, that grandmother who just wrote a book, you know, working on her legacy, right? Those are very different genres of music potentially. So we've got to decide, are we, are we doing what we think is cool? Or are we doing what they think is cool? Does that make sense you guys? Yeah. yeah, I wanted to kind of ask uh, just really quick, uh, have you seen anything as far as metrics of using trending music versus, you know, what, whatever you want, just because I know on TikTok, using a trending audio or trending music behind your video is a pretty diff like surefire way to help increase traffic. Yeah, the two times I've like had a video go over a thousand views overnight, it was a trending music, right? The, the song to me wasn't very like... It didn't, didn't really matter if it was piano or rocket, like it just doesn't matter. Um, but I've also done some trending songs and they didn't go anywhere. So to me, it's not, it's not a guarantee that no. that uh, song is going to go somewhere. Uh, I did have one song, like a really simple kind of creative show and tell thing where I, I picked a song. I uploaded it strangely at like 9 p.m. at night, which was a pretty late upload, but the international market picked it up because I could see it was like India and in parts of Asia and Africa, right? So the time of day can definitely affect, I think, the music as well. So that combination I'm I'm still playing with in terms of what's the best way to look at it. But there's definitely uh an international audience that you can be attracting is not just the local people in your backyard, which I think is cool. So, and then the other thing to consider is what are they sharing? So if you follow say five or 10 of your clients on Instagram, what is the music that they are using? Cause you can re-leverage the music that they're doing. So you don't have to just like come up from your imagination. You can pop on again, scroll through your feed, find what your favorite clients are doing, save their music and then you're off, right? So you have options. Okay, uh, another thing to really consider is, you know, with the show and the show versus tell spectrum, that's what I'm calling it. On the far left, we have show and tell versus talk and tell, right? So the talking head thing, I think we've, a lot of us have been doing that for several years. Now with Instagram and the reels and people with short attention spans, I'm noticing a trend in visual storytelling. Um, there's this thing called a flat lay, which is you take a photo of you know everything on your table, but it's kind of that over your shoulder, you're showing what you're looking at, whether it's a bunch of books or art supplies or you know cool little sneakers are moving around. But that idea of the flat lay, the camera's on top, everything's laid flat. I'm seeing a lot of that right now. Um, you can get really creative with the angles and storytelling here. Um, great for process videos, right? If you're teaching something, you can absolutely dive in and do a lot of kind of show and tell, and then you can speed it up. 
Um, you can also showcase your portfolio. You can record things from your screen. Like I was like, oh, you know, my, my meetup developing digitally you, like I have a bunch of hashtags. How do I showcase that? I went into my phone, you know, in your iPhone, there's a way you can record your, um, your screen. If you don't know how Google, how to record my screen on iPhone, that's, that's how I always remember to get there. Um, but you can literally, you know, you could do this for an email you've done, a set of hashtags you want to talk about, a blog post you just wrote, you know, overviewing, you know, like Lynette, if you want to talk about a certain newscaster, you can literally go to their website and point and talk over that with recording the screen. So there's really interesting ways where people can do, you know, like you're kind of collaborating with the other creative things out there. Um, and then the other benefit of this is you don't have to show your face. A lot of times my clients are like, I don't want to be on, you know, on, on screen. Okay, don't. <laughs> then show us something cool. Like get really good at storytelling because there are different ways to to visually craft that story. Um, and then on the other side, of course, you've got interviews and collaborations. You can do talking heads together, right? Like there's no reason the four of us can all play on two different you know interviews throughout the next two months and have because when you have different people talking about your topic, it it comes across differently when someone's interviewing you versus you just, um, you know, sharing your thoughts and then collaborating. Um, and then, yeah, face, face only talking head videos. These can also be scripted or improv, right? I've experimented a lot with if I plan really hard to script something versus just showing up and, you know, being in the moment. So you're going to want to find out what's your rhythm there. Um, okay. Moving on. So slow versus fast. And this is neat because, you can slow it down. You can take a video clip that you've done and slow it down by 0.3 times slower, right? So if you want it to, to go slow or you kind of make it funny or just it's a process video or whatever, and inside Instagram, so up here, so you're making a reel, you're in the reel, you'll see this little 1x speed thing. Sometimes it like you kind of have to hover. It's, it's like it's not always there, but know that when it hovers, you can edit that clip. From there, you get it. If you if you touch that one X, it will show you one of these times, five you know point five, which is just a little bit slower, two times, twice as fast, four times. Now Instagram continues to change this. I have seen eight times in there. Ironically, my one video that got twenty thousand views, I had done eight times the speed. I thought that was fasting. It was an art project thing, and I was doodling and doing some watercolor painting. But that was the only thing that was super different than my other, um, it was time of day and then eight times the speed. So I don't know if Instagram was pushing for sped up videos or not, but today when I did that screenshot, the 8X wasn't even there. And so these little buttons, you know, they're changing what they're going to allow us creatives to do. But I encourage you to try something slower, try something faster. And of course, there's this happy medium of, you know, what actually helps your, your audience understand because that is important. Um, templates versus your own mix. So again, with storyboarding, you have a lot of options and there are hundreds and hundreds of templates out there. You can see this one, six seconds, two, three, four seconds, one second, two seconds. Is there a real magic number? I don't know, but you don't have to innovate here, right? Like you can literally swipe somebody else's template or create your own, right? And so sometimes like I've done a couple of collages where I'll just upload in two seconds, five seconds, two seconds, and no real reason, but then that becomes a template somebody else can use. And so it's just, it's really interesting how this, this option is, um, but you don't have to start from scratch here, you guys. You can literally look in your phone right now, click on videos and see, do you have a hundred videos? Do you have 2000 videos? If you aren't creating a lot of video content right now, it is definitely a vertical, creation zone. This is not our old school uh, YouTube, you know, hamburger form. Lots of options there. Um, and then your voice or theirs. We talked about this briefly earlier, but the audio options, um, again, you can show up and just start yakking away about your topic, your products, your services, your books, your, your ideas, your vision. And then other people can leverage that. So I know in our laugh tech company, we've got some humorous voices around. Know that if you are doing humorous voices or you're practicing or you've got a funny line, somebody else can rip that audio, leverage it and put their own visual to it. So again, <laughs> kind of wild, kind of exciting for those comedic people. Um, 
or I guess I went, I went backwards on that, but yeah, you can pull music from other creators, right? Other movie makers, other musicians, other talking heads. Like, do you guys know Danielle Laporte? She's a big influencer in my thing. I've saved three of her like thoughtful, you know, what are the monologues slash affirmation videos. I'm like, I could totally put art to her voice. I haven't done it yet, but I've been saving them, right? So think about the influencers of your industry or the talking heads or the, um, what do you call them, Lynette? The pundits, you know, the people who have a perspective. What's that media term? You mean influencers? What's the P word? Like pun, pun, political pundits? Uh, well, there, there are political pundits. Uh, that's the phrase that I'm used to hearing that word in. Yeah, so like you can yeah. literally take someone else's words and then you respond with a different visual, right? So, and I think this is where the creative collabor collaborative opportunity is going to skyrocket because somebody on the news may say, oh, well, that doesn't matter. And then, you know, pissed off mommy bloggers, like, look at how much it matters, right? Like they can literally fight, not fight, um, just kind of interject their own perspective to these other, you know, professional storytellers. Well, the the novice has an opportunity now to enter the conversation in, in a pretty bold way. Um, anyways, just know that you don't have to use your voice if you don't want to. And if you want to, you can. And you can actually turn off the option for other people to leverage your voice if you don't want them to. So you have some control, which is nice. But again, if you want to be found, if you're a humorist or if you want people to leverage your, you know, meditative script or your, you know, motivational thoughts, you can let them do that. Okay. That, a lot of creative decisions, right? So not too hard, but there, there was a lot there to be considering, and uh, I think you guys are doing great. So three decisions all leaders must consider. And the reason I do this is because I have been on the inside of over 10 Instagram accounts in the last couple of years. And a lot of people do not consider these things. And then it's either very stressful for me, <laughs> whoever's on their team, or uh, you can have bad things happen where... Um, you can lose your account, right? So I've actually got a friend in our digital PNA community. Her entire Instagram account got hacked slash stolen. I don't know if it was a VA or if it was just, it didn't change passwords quickly enough. But when you are looking at growing your team, think about, do you want your spouse to have access? Do you want your VA, your assistant, your receptionist, your marketing manager, a social media manager, somebody like me? But you got to think about that because if you say, yes, I want other people to, to help, what are the grounds for termination? At what point is there, you know, in that social media policy, what are you really going to have? Just, it, it's something a lot of people don't think about. We assume that everyone's great like we are. And at the end of the day, when desperate measures come, people can make really poor choices. And so as a leader to protect your account, like I have seen famous motivational people lose their entire YouTube account where it's cash flowing at $10,000 a month because they are like mega famous, but they still have some ex-wife or whatever in there and they lose control. So definitely consider this because if you don't, it could just, it could be real trouble. Can I ask a quick question on that? Yeah. I have, uh, Jesus, probably 20 accounts, 20. Yeah. Uh, for example, on Facebook, where I have tried repeatedly to get this previous client to get me off the account. Yeah. Because that's a, a tremendous liability for me to, you know, yeah. be yeah. open for, you know. Yep. So, and I've tried to get myself off and I can't do it. So, is that just, that's something that the owner of the account has to do, right? Or they, can you they take do. yourself off as, as an admin? Yeah, you can't take yourself off all the time. Sometimes you can, sometimes you, time out, you can't. I have now put into my contracts for management clients that if they keep me on, I will bill them monthly a fee just to be on there. Because I don't like mm -hmm. seeing 20 notifications come through if I'm not supposed to be in there. You know, so for me, and then they're like, oh, I don't want to get charged again. So they'll just, you know, they'll take you off. Like that's just a, a technical way. To oh, know. it's it's mental right now, Marcel. It's it, completely it, out of control. It is, it is very hard on that. So, um, but with that being said, when you're outsourcing the management or you've got a VA or social media manager, what I have found is the the client or the expert won't be listening to their audience. They're not hearing the complaints, the wonderful excitement, the raves, the, the moans and groans, right? So 
if you are going to outsource some of your, your management, you need to have a plan for you to listen still, right? So I'm encouraging my clients, you still should watch a minimum of 10 reels a day. That's like watching a five minute, you know, commercial on TV, right? So it's not that much, but if you lose connection with your audience, how are you going to know what type of content is going to serve them, right? So, so much of marketing, we talk about public speaking or what do we say or how do we say it? Well, it's also about listening and listening closely to what are people worried about? What are their concerns? What's keeping them up? You know, so if you're not listening to them, there's a good chance that your manager, social media manager is going to have better expertise in that, in that industry than you will, if you're not listening. And so I, I say this because I want people to know that you can't outsource hundred percent of it. You need to be in the game. You need to listen at some level, even if they are helping you create something, but they cannot just fully, you, you just can't outsource your brain energy at that level, right? You've got to participate. And then number three, why are people following you? And then what's in your branding lane and what isn't? So when I first started Instagram, I was at a big, you know, internet marketing conference years ago. And my feed was full of like my nephews and my balloons and I'm on an airplane. And it was like, it was like the most random thing. And there was this fitness influencer at the time. And she's like, Marcel, why should I follow you? <laughs> like, what are you going to give me? What's the value? And if, if there's not a clear why for the account, people will follow you for a month or two and then they'll unfollow you. And there's this kind of weird, you know, like, cause I can't be everything to everybody, right? None of us can do all that. And so we've got to decide what, and then my solution has been to help clients figure out, these are just two examples, but what's in your branding lane? Like, what do you want to be known for? You know, is it, is it, sales tips and conversation starters and interviews and small business stuff, right? I'm thinking biz ex here, right? Maybe you don't go into politics, religion, big debate of divisive topics, right? Like, and you get to decide as a team, what do you avoid and what do you embrace? Um, and then like on the right here, I've got a, a just wonderful flower farmer, <laughs> not flower farmer, florist who does like custom bouquets and her whole feed is like wedding planning and event design and like local and it's just it's like so just feminine and lovely and we wouldn't touch something like soccer or sports or travel or fitness and so we've got to decide why are people going to follow us you know I've got another client she's a home organizer and she loves political stuff. And I'm like, look, if you want to go into politics, start another account, right? Because her whole branding thing is about organizing your kitchen and bathroom. And all, like, it is not about, he said, she said in the political world. Um, so get really clear on why would people follow you? Because if, if you're too random and scattered, there's a good chance you're going to lose people. Um, and if you guys have other ideas on how to do this, this is just, it's been a one sheet I've been making with clients for years now, because I got to know what can I talk about and what can't like, which holidays are safe. You know, I got one client, they got pissed at me because I wanted to do a happy Thanksgiving post and not, ah, they were, you know, like a third native American and I was going to break some rules in her household, you know? So like, I have to, I have to ask these things, which holidays are okay. You know, there are, there are certain topics that are no fly, no fly zone, just don't go there. And so I'm not saying what those things are for you, but you've got to decide what's the things you're not going to touch. Cause if you touch everything, it just, it's going to be confusing for your people. Well, I got to tell you in a, from a PR perspective, you know, when you were saying to, you have to decide what you will or won't do uh, as a publicist, you know, strategic uh, public relations professional, if any of my clients decide they're going to go down the religious road, political road, you know, anything polarizing, yeah. I terminate the relationship yeah, because just... I mean, not only does it affect us as business owners and, and what we do within our expertise, but they're hurting themselves so dramatically and they, and if they're not going to be coachable about it, you know, it's yeah. too important. It's just yeah. too important way too more and so I think every leader has to decide for themselves what are, what's again who will they allow into their account and what are those safety protocols what are grounds for termination what if you hire somebody in the Philippines or another state how are you going to go again like you're going to be in trouble right and I've seen accounts get taken over you start doing all this international stuff because you can hire somebody for pennies on the dollar have them do things that maybe are not I don't know, owning your entire network or your email list. Like there are some things where you gotta, you gotta tread carefully. Um, and then what are you listening for? Right. Sometimes people are like, well, what, what, what should I talk about? 
sometimes you can just open up your app to listen, right? If everyone is talking about something, I don't know, like chat stuff or whatever, like lately it's been AI stuff. Like what are they, what do they want information on? You know, so just be aware of that. And then how do you, um, how do you capture the problems or decisions you want to address? So I encourage clients have kind of an ongoing tickler of ideas, whether it's in GQs or air tables or their notes, but have a list of things you want to tackle. Because if you are influencing, you've got to be able to provide information consistently that's going to help people who are searching that. Um, and then really think about, is your feed, is it is it the vision casting strategy or is it really sales and marketing? Because a lot of people don't know yet. And I think it can be both. Um, and then we talked about branding lane, what to cover and what to avoid. Um, and again, if you guys ever want to go deeper into this stuff, I would love to geek out with you and help you get clear. They're, you know, they're scripted, they're storyboarding, and there's improv. I think improv can be great. I also think storyboarding and scripting can be really powerful when people want to be more, more intentional. Um, so storyboarding is now vertical. This is a big change with reels. In the past, illustrators or you know people in media would create these rectangular shaped storyboards and they would have to sketch out that. If you want to do that now, you're going to need to create a vertical template for yourself or just you know make a couple tall rectangle things on a piece of paper. But it is a different form of storytelling. And it's you have a lot more space, you know, in terms of how much room there is on each potential scene. Uh, so that's just something to consider and then have a shot list and depending on your you know confidence with video making in general you may or may not have done this but when I go to a client's property I'm always like what are the shots I want to get you know is it going from the bridge you know into Seattle is it walking through their beautiful garden is it who knows what and you guys can get really creative and do a lot of research on this but the more a team is involved the more you need to have a shot list especially if you're hiring a video editor or somebody's coming you know to shoot it if you're not doing it on your own but what are those places like maybe you're at a sushi joint and you want to talk about insurance and sushi I don't know like there's been a whole trend on showers and people talk about their loofahs and things in the showers probably not in your branding line but it's I've seen it um, maybe you're in a garden or on a roof right so if you're going to a networking event maybe you're like I want to capture 10 seconds of the host. I want to capture some of the buffet table. I want to capture three selfies with, uh, you know, colleagues and I want to capture the sunset and, you know, who knows what, but so you can kind of start planning these reels with what are those visuals? It will just, it'll give you a little bit more focus versus like, ah, I can capture this whole event for 90 minutes when you're like, Maybe not everything is what your particular audience would, would care to, to see about. So consider your shot list. And if you've never worked with a shot list, I encourage you to hop on YouTube and search. What's the shot list? How do I use the shot list? And just get more familiar with that, that creative story storytelling ability. I don't always have one, but usually I've gotten into it because I'm like, oh, I want to get, you know, like XYZ shot or whatever. And then let's see, okay, a CTA list, have one, call to action. When you think of your marketing context, sure, you can say message me to learn more or, you know, apply today or call today, link in the bio, but I encourage you have at least 10, maybe even 20 more unique custom things, you know, just have them ready. So when you're there, you can literally look on your wall or look in your wisdom guide to see what are the things I want to do. Some of the things to consider for real specifically click the save button, right? Like I'm looking at you, Matt, you're talking about insurance stuff. Click the save button so you can talk, show this reel to your partner when you're looking at your insurance needs or click the save button when you're ready to, you know, start building your media kit out, right? So whatever your call to action is, tell them to save it. If they'll save it, it's going to help you with the whole magic of, of reels. Um, send this to a friend who needs it. Co comment below with a better idea, right? If you've got, um, I don't want to call them arrogant, but if you've got, influencers in your audience let them give you a better idea just get like let them have some fun with them right um share this to your boss or your bestie right i've seen that before um tell me your version of the story message me um apply today don't waste your time call today buy today to get xyz smash the share button my sales coach always says that one and i i rarely do but sometimes i will hit the share button and share it for him you know so there are things that get people to take action uh so have fun with that. But if you create this ahead of time, 
then when you go to type up your caption after you've spent you know a couple of minutes making your reel you don't have to be like oh what do i say and it really depends on what are your marketing objectives for your team uh, but having that CTA list, to me, it's just, it's a real easy thing that we can all do. And then every year review it. Maybe the links have changed. Maybe the domain name has changed. Maybe there's a different, you know, link for that sales funnel. And then how to set up your account to monetize it. And I know, Matt, this is one that for you, you were really looking at. And I think both Lynette and Michael, you guys can check this out. But what I have found is any account over, once you've reached your first thousand views on any reel, that seems to be the magic number. Once you can get a reel to have a thousand views, Instagram will invite you to do this. So you can't do this just without having one great reel out there. So know that, and you have to have a business account. So make sure you have a business account. That's also going to give you analytics, um, links, and all sorts of things that you don't get when you are a personal account. Uh once they invite you to monetize do, there's going to be a lot of fine print. Read it, right? Some of you, depending on how artistic you are, like I've got one friend, she's an um, employment lawyer out of Seattle with an artist. She's like, heck no, Instagram is not getting all my my content. So some people are very particular and they will not do this. So I encourage you, read all the, the fine print. For me, heck, take it. <laughs> I, I, I'm happy to get paid for this stuff. Um, and then you get to set up your payment, right? So usually it's PayPal. They'll let you um, have a PayPal account. Now, this is not your retirement planning account necessarily. But what I've learned in my last 90 days, so my first two months, you can see in December, I got $30. January, I got $31. And this February, I got $102, right? Um, the, I had one, one reel got about 20,000 views and that's what bumped it up to about a hundred, but most of my views, 200, 350 to five, you know, like, so I'm not, I'm not like a heavy hitter right now in that space. And, and like Matt has experienced, he, he had one TikTok with a million views. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, but the idea that some of your reels are going to blow up and most of them won't, that's okay. Right. Have fun, experiment, explore, but no, um, every 30 days from what you learn, you can improve it for the next 30 days, right? Uh, and again, it's just, it's exciting because for years, like I've had a YouTube account since 2008, long time. YouTube has never paid me a dollar. I've got over 50,000 views there. They've never paid me. I'm not, I'm not big enough, right? But I'm, I'm big enough for Instagram to say, hey girl, good job. Here's a little bit of money, <laughs> you know? So that's exciting. Um, and then I have a quick oh, question, um, how, cause like I, my personal Instagram that I'm using a lot for business stuff, I, I didn't make it a business account. Is there, a, a, do you know if there's an easy way just to train, change it over? Yes. You can definitely edit it over to one. Just poke around those three little lines, poke around up there. It should say, uh, move it to a, a business account or just Google how to do it. There'll be a, a tutorial somewhere out there on how to do it, but you can absolutely convert a personal page and it takes like five minutes, you know, pretty awesome. easy. Thank to you. Do. Um, and then, yeah, once you start getting some more reels in the higher numbers and ask five friends to share the reels, right? Like that's a silly way to get fast reels, but have a couple of friends, you know, we're all in a, a PNA networking or organization. Why not, you know, share some diverse content into our feed to help our friends out so they can, you know, turn this monetization thing on. Um, I've also noticed like Instagram is very encouraging. Like this one, they're like, congrats, this reel received, you know, 468% more plays than any of your last five reels. So they're going to tell you when you're doing good or when the, their, you know, huge audience pool is enjoying your reels. And so just, just take those as little, you know, pats on the back and encouragement to create, keep creating similar types of content. Again, I'm, I like the talking head ones because I always have a lot to say, but I'm noticing they like the show and tell right now. I'm, I'm having to do this balance of show and tell and, and talking head. Uh, but it is very cool because a lot of people, this was never available years ago. And to me, it's like, we have, the freedom to speak our mind is something in America we can do. And now they're, they're paying us to do that, right? Like in not huge amounts, uh, but it's something cool that if you're already doing it, you might as well. Um, I've heard people with different numbers here at different, you know, so when they invite you, they will say up to say $1,200 a month, they'll give you a cap, right? I think I could do it was like 300 reels. I was like, I'm not going to do 300 reels in a month, but like they give you, you know, they spell it out. They give you a limit and then they, um, they kind of let you go off. Okay. Let's see. I got two more slides here. 
Um, I want to encourage people, if you haven't yet read Financial Joy, I want you to buy it. It's on dreamosity.com. I talk about uh, knowing the data behind your dreams and the connection between your sales plan versus your social media activities. And getting that right flow is really, really, really important. Um, and then also the Revenue Ringlet. It's my new ongoing mastermind program, which also has six modules talking about that 30-day cycle of your, of your, how many conversations do you have versus that net profit, right? I'm really wanting to build this confidence up with knowing your net profit every month for business owners. Because if you're playing, you know, if you're Pete Carroll playing for the Seahawks and you don't know the score until the fourth quarter, you're doing it wrong, guys. You've got to know that net profit each month so you can find out which of those marketing objectives are working. Um, we talk about influence trajectory, right? So from zero to a million, how do we look at our influence over time, right? So I have a really cool complex, it's not complex, but it's it's not like your basic marketing advice stuff. Let's, I, go, I go pretty deep into it. And then talk about mapping out your sphere of influence, um, visualizing your net, your net worth, and also your sales team, right? Like how many referrals did you get this last month from your sales team? Was it seven? Was it one, right? If you focus your scripts around empowering your sales team, it's going to shift that bottom line. Um, the Tornado SOS is more of a kind of life coaching module around like, hey, grief happens, people die, kids get sick, COVID happens, right? How do you manage some of that in a creative and fun way? And then the allocation station is my take on professional budgeting and how do we allocate the resources, whether we've got $2,000 to work with this month or $20,000, we have really got to build that skill set in allocating our funds. So again, whether it's a lot or a little, we're making good choices that propel us into the next month. So you can learn more about that at therevenueringlet.com.